So we're going to continue with the polynomial regression assignment. Um, in this video, we are going to create it from scratch and then compare our result with what we found in using NumPy. Okay. So as an example, we're going to do a quadratic fit. Um, so in our case, n is going to be equal to 2. Okay. And then later on, we can modify the code such that n can be any 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 number. Okay. So the main aim is to solve for these coefficients a, b, and c by solving this set of equations. Okay, these set of equations were derived by trying to minimize the error function. And this is as long as you find the solution for the set of equations, you should be able to find the final equation. Okay. The set of equations can also be written in the following form um, in which we separate the coefficients and the values you're looking for. So A, B and C. And the matrix that forms from the equation is the following. Here is going to be sum of Xi. Here is going to be sum of Xi squared and sum of Xi to the power 1. And the first one is actually sum of xi to the power 0. Okay. And then in the next line, we have sum of xi to the power 1, sum of xi to the power 2, sum of xi to the power 3. And in the next line, we have sum of xi to the power 2, sum of xi to the power 3, sum of xi to the power 4. Okay. And as the value of n increases, the number of e equations will increase and the same pattern is repeated. On the right hand side we have the following which is the first one is sum of yi, the next one is sum of xi to the power 1 times yi and the next one is sum of xi to the power 2 yi. Okay, So the first, first row is actually xi to the power 0. Okay, So I hope the pattern is clear here. Um, so we just have to use Python to create these matrix. Um, we call this matrix, let's call this matrix A. Let's call this matrix um, X and then this vector here B. Then the solution that we are looking for is the coefficients X and X can be solved just by doing A inverse um, multiplied by B. Okay, so as long as you can form these matrix, these this matrix and this vector you should be able to solve for the coefficients. Okay, so let's look at how to create this. So in uh, Python, we're going to write loops, which will loop through the number uh, the number of rows, so rows, and the number of columns. Okay, and then we'll try to see if we can get these summations uh, going in Python. Okay, so let's get started in Python. So we'll continue the story here. So we'll write n first. We'll define it as 2 and see if it matches with our test case, which is this one. So as long as we can generate this matrix, we should be able to come back and change n and generate any, uh, any other matrix as well. Okay. So for i in range of n, uh, print i. Okay. So this is going to be the row. So we can see it's printing two rows, row 0 and row 1. We want to go all the way to row 2, right? There are three rows. For n equal to 2, quadratic equation, we have three rows. So this has to go from row 0, row 1, and row 2. So just put a plus 1 over here. There you go. OK. Uh, and let's initialize our matrices. So let's initialize our matrix A. We can do so by using the numpy zeros function. So we create a, a, num, uh, a matrix filled with zeros and we'll replace them individually. And the size for this is going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. So for n equal to 2, it's going to be 3 by 3. For n equal to 4, it's going to be 5 by 5. So this is going to be n plus 1. The size has to be written inside these uh, parentheses. It has to be a tuple. So this is n plus 1 for the number of rows and n plus 1 for the number of columns. Okay, Same thing, we'll initialize our b vector as well. It has to be, again, zeros. 
it's a column vector so uh, sorry a row vector so it's going to be n plus one rows and one column okay so that's that <coughs> so now we have everything ready now let's write the next loop which is for j in range n plus one and this is going to be our columns column j so for every row we go through the columns and then we go to the next row we go through the columns so the four loops are working properly now we just need to define what are we exactly doing for each element okay so let's look at the equations again so for any given element what is happening we need to do sum of xi to some power okay as long as you can link the power to the row number which is i and the column number j uh, we should be able to solve this issue okay so if you look at the first number okay at this the first point i and j is 1 comma 1 sorry 0 comma 0 we are 0 indexed the next point is 0 comma 1 next point is 0 comma 2 and then the next line is going to be 1 comma 0 so this is i comma j by the way okay and then next line is 1 comma 1 and then 1 comma 2 okay if you look closely you can notice that the power is actually just a sum of i and j so if you go to the middle term this is xi squared xi squared 1 plus 1 is 2 okay if you go to the next term this is 3 it's 1 plus 2 is 3 okay so it's a very easy pattern that we can quickly exploit we just have to say x to the power i plus j okay <coughs> so if you write that here let's go back so print each element is going to be sum of x to the power okay I'm gonna write this as a formatted string by using the term f here and then this is just going to be i plus j and let's see if it prints out what we want <coughs> so there you go so for each column so 0 0 it's the sum of x to the power 0 then x to the power 1 x to the power 2 we're done with the row number 0 row number 1 is going to be x to the power 1 2 and 3 and this is very similar to what we have here 1 2 and 3 okay then the row after that is going to be x to the power 2 x to the power 3 and x to the power 4 x to the power 2 3 and 4 okay so we're done with the a matrix uh, basically now we'll look into the b matrix uh, b vector now b doesn't change as we change uh, the columns it only changes as we change the row okay so we don't we do not have to write it inside this for loop so we'll have to exit this uh, row the column for loop and then enter the enter the row for loop which is i okay here we will do something we'll, let's print it and check so this is b element and this one has to be sum of x to the power something times y okay now what is that something in terms of i and j this is very easy okay so you can see it's directly related to the row number so here it's 0 and then it's 1 and then it's 2 okay row number was 0 here 1 here and 2 so 0 1 and then 2 okay so this is straightforward is just i so we just put here i and there you have it we have the elements of the a matrix done and the elements of the B matrix done okay so everything seems to be working properly we just need to put this in, in numerical terms okay so for the A part we have to first index it we have to say go to the I comma J term and then set this to be the sum of X to the power to the power I plus J okay and same thing for the B term we say B set the I th B term so I the, the so it's going to change like one term in the B vector okay okay this has to be the sum of x to the power I okay times Y 
and and that's pretty much it now x and y has already been defined here let me just redefine it here so that it's not confusing it comes from the table or from whatever data that you have and let's see if the code now runs okay so everything seems to be running okay let's print a and print b to see what is inside there Okay, so we have our A matrix here and our B matrix here. Everything seems to be working normally. Okay, if you ever have, have any issues with the multiplications and the summations, um, you can do the following. You can convert your X and Y to NumPy's, uh, NumPy array, so NP dot array. So probably you won't have this issue, but if you do have some kind of error that doesn't allow you to do the multiplication, just convert these to arrays okay you'll, you'll get the same result now this is not the final solution so we have our a matrix and our b matrix so we got we got um, we got this one check we got this one check now we are trying to solve for x all you have to do is just do a inverse times b okay so how do you do that in python you just use the numpy uh, package again so we say solution we'll call the solution c a vector c equal to np dot linear algebra dot inverse of a multiplied by b okay and, and then let's print and see what's inside c okay these are our coefficients okay now you'll see okay this is where the error was supposed to show up i think so if you do not have this as the array that still works okay yeah so you see one quick issue c was supposed to be a vector but it's giving you it as a matrix so this multiplication sign only works if you have set up your matrices properly okay but np0 by default is not a matrix it's an array you, and you can confirm this you can just say print type of a and it'll tell you that it's a, an array so the multiplication doesn't work like a matrix multiplication and matrix multiplication is what we need so in order to do that you can use the dot product function so np dot dot and then this is the first term comma the second term okay so this will make sure that it's a matrix multiplication between the inverse of a and b now let's see okay there you have your c vector now so it's a vector now so it seems everything seems to be working fine now let's see the result c so let's now compare these numbers to what we can find in in numpy so if you look at numpy um, if we set the order to be 2 so n equal to 2 we get the following coefficients okay 0 0.01 and 0 0.14 and 35 so let's check if we got the same numbers here. So yes, this, this is in scientific notation. So it's, this is 35, this is 0 0.01, and this is 0 0.012. So all is correct. Let's just do a linear fit in case, I mean, it's a bit simpler. So n equal to 1, and you look at your coefficients, it's 7.99 and 1.33. And if you look at your numpy, you get the same number, 7.99 and 1.33 okay now to get it into into the same form so we want this number to come first and then this come number to come second you can just flip it so here we're getting the 7.99 first because that's how we that's how this matrix is set up this is a b c so the vector you will get is actually c the one the vector that we want is c b and a okay in that order okay then it will be easy for us to implement the polynomial as a as a function so let's flip c so you can just say c equal to np dot flip c and now the first element is 1.3 and 7.99 the second element which is very which is in the same order that you can do with the polynomial okay 
The rest of the story is the same. Since you have a C vector, you can create a polynomial from it. So you can say F equal to N P dot poly one dimension, one dimensional equation and give it the coefficients. Okay. And then let's print F to check if we get the same equation. Okay, you will get this error. Polynomial must be one dimensional only because you can see C, although it looks like a vector, is actually a two dimensional uh, vector. Okay, if you look at the shape, for example, here, C dot shape, you can see it's a two by one. So it's actually a two dimensional vector. Okay, we have to convert this to a one dimensional uh, vector. You can do so by using another command, which is called C dot, sorry, um, C dot ravel, I think. Yeah. So after you do this command, what is happening is it unra it uh, makes sure that C is a, a column is a what do you call it? the shape of C is different. So C okay. So you can see now it's just a list with one square bracket. That means it's a one-dimensional array. Previously, it was a two-dimensional array because you could see that it was a list within another list. Okay, so after we apply this function, it converts it to a single list, and then you can form the equation. And the equation is going to be the same as what you saw in the polynomial fit. Okay, so that's basically how you would create your own um, polynomial regression, and we can do this for any number of n. Okay, and you'll get your polynomial fit. Okay, um, you can comment these out if needed, and these are your final answers. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.